Hey guys, hope everyone's well. Just got back from a ride out. It's been a bit wet and muddy. So uh, I just want to do a video on, on boot choice, adventure boot choice, or a boot that you would choose to go on an adventure in. Uh, I mean, it's a long way away since uh, I came back from Australia in a pair of Converse high tops. You know, for me at that time, doing a long trip on a small bike, a pair of high, Converse high tops were a perfectly legitimate uh, form of footwear to get me from Sydney to London. Things have moved on, bikes have got bigger, trails have got tougher feet have got wetter etc for the last eight nine years i would say uh, i've been right wearing these gain all-terrain uh, gore boots which are actually a trials boot so soft soft shell no real protection in them but i did a a boot test an adventure boot test for ride magazine probably back in 2015 or so and we got in 12 14 pairs of of the, um, the top or the, the, the main adventure boots that were out at that year, uh, which to be honest have not changed that much. You know, still got the City Adventures, the Alpine Star Toucans, the former Adventures, and then the Gains. What else did we have? TCXs, the Drifters. So it was pretty much of a muchness as to what we've got now. Altbergs, we had some Altbergs in there. Then we also had the GS Pro BMW boots, which were more of an Enduro boot. And the idea of the test was just to try and, you know, the, the downside of any journalism these days certainly in the press is to pick a winner well the winner is dependent on what you're going to use the boot for so for me i was always looking at which boot suited which purpose and obviously the highly protective boot suited the highly vulnerable dangerous type of riding i.e very difficult trail riding etc where you need maximum protection but for somebody who did a lot of adventure riding where you might be on the bike you might be off the bike you might be doing a lot of road work you might be doing some trails to me, the best all-round boot was, again, all-terrain uh, gore, uh, and they allowed me to keep the, the boot that I favoured the most. So I kept, again, all-terrain, and uh, I had a second pair about four or five years ago. So each pair lasts me maybe four years or so. I don't look after them. I don't never wax them, or maybe twice um, in four years. So I'm, I'm a very neglectful user of boots. They spend a lot of time wet. They spend a lot of time at the minute in deep water and in mud. So I need a boot that just does a good all-round job, you know, it gives me some protection, some comfort, some waterproofing. Uh, and what I, I guess why I migrated towards a trials boot was because it just gives me the suppleness uh, of an all-year-round, all-occasion boot. There is that compromise, obviously, if you uh, have a softer boot, there's more chance of ankle damage and other things like that, uh, tib, fib, breakages around that area. You know, it opens yourself up to uh, vulnerabilities or, or risks of injury. But it's a compromise, you know, everything about motorcycling is a compromise. And so I came to these boots accepting that there was a compromise, but liking the fact that they were waterproof for a good first few years of ownership, that they were all day comfortable, that they give good control on the, the pedals. You know, I've got a good feel of the brakes, good feel, feel of the gearbox. And I just like them. I like the browns, basic uh, styling of them. I actually like the styling of them. You know, you never should really choose gear as a, as a style. Uh, style over function but ju just as, as an all-rounder and then the price 280 quid which meant I bought my second pair as I say four years ago and these are them so I'm getting to the point now that I was out today and these have started leaking or they've been leaking for the last six months or so obviously you can get resold and all that sort of stuff but I tend to start looking at other boots and I've looked at the Alpine Star Tech Tees and City Adventures and the Toucans again you know again I come back to this as a boot it just suits my needs. Uh, I think the importance, well, I'm sort of drifting, I'm waffling a bit here, which I, I gather, I gather is, a, is, is, is typical of, of, my, of me talking. But uh, I guess what I wanted to say is the boot is, to me, the most essential part of your adventure motorcycling gear, your setup. Like for me, I am wearing a £100 pair of RST trousers that are four years old, which aren't that great, but they'll do the job. And we're wearing an Age of Glory jacket, which I bought three or four years ago. It's not really an adventure jacket, but it's got protection in it'll do. And then I've got an ex-German military jacket as an overcoat, which I love because it's long in the body and high in the neck. It does a great job. My kit cost me 300 quid if that. You know, my helmet, yes, I've got a showy helmet. It's a good helmet, but I don't need a good helmet. I've got an LS2 helmet, which seems to do the job. How it will perform in a crash, I don't know. Hopefully, I'll never find out whether it's as good as an RI or better or worse. Who knows? But one thing I do know is that if a boot performs well, then I'm nine-tenths of the way there to having a good, good kit set up. The boots are crucial. Like as I say, you can get cheap trousers and put some good waterproof, some good ex-military waterproof over the top. Job done. You can get a cheap jacket, 
second hand, whatever, put a cheap military jacket over the top, you're waterproof, job done. There's nothing much you can do with the boots. If you get by a pa bad pair of boots that leak from the outset or leak consistently, you just up shit creek without a paddle from the get-go. Yes, you can wear waterproof socks, which are great, but if you're doing a multi-day trip and you're camping, a wet boot is a wet boot and a wet sock is a wet sock. So when you come in the morning to put your wet uh, waterproof sock on in a wet boot, you've got that horrible sensation of coldness. So to avoid that, I think the best way is to buy a properly waterproof boot, whether it's a city adventure if you want more protection, or the Toucans, they all perform really well in the waterproof testing I did, or a pair of gear in all terrain. To me, water, a good waterproof boot is, is the essential part of a sort of a Western Hemisphere adventure trip. Um, what type of boot you buy, obviously is up to you. As I say, I, I like these gear in all terrains, I, I accept the compromises, but I'm starting with a good boot. So if you're on a limited budget, if you've got 600 quid to spend on motorcycle kit for a long distance trip, I would spend as little as possible on the on the garments because garments are garments. Are, you know, I love the fact that there's high end thousand pound, 1500 pound laminate jackets. That's great as options, but not everyone's got that sort of money. So if you ain't got that sort of money, I would certainly economize on the garment, even economize on the helmet as long as it's gold standard. You know, you, you're buying a standard, that's what you're buying. But it's the boot where I would spend my money. I would spend £250, at £280, pound, £300, pound, £300 pound on a boot because that's what you're going to be most grateful for when you crawl out your tent on a wet, cold morning and put your boot in a dry boot rather than a wet, soggy boot. Um, so that's it. you want to do a video, no matter what bike you ride, big bike, small bike, cheap bike, expensive bike, if you're going to spend money on your kit, get good boots. And you'll be grateful when you stood in a wet, muddy ditch on a North Devon lane and the water's not coming in around your toes because it's cold then. So that's it. Gain all terrain, gauze. I'm going to buy another set. They do gain, do actually, do gain, do a new pair. I don't know what they're called, but they've got more ankle protection. So I might go, go to, to that. Um, but what I would say is, what do you wear? Tell me what you wear. Why do you wear it? Why did you buy it? Has it met your expectations? Would you recommend it to somebody else? So use this as an opportunity for you to tell me and to tell anybody reading the comments what you wear and why you wear it. Because readers of those comments might be able to say, oh, I do that type of riding. I'm that type of guy, type of girl. Those boots might be good for me. So let's use this as an altruistic way of gathering some data on what boots work for different people. But for me, gain all terrains. Cheers. Going home.